Hello, welcome to Dragonflies and Damselflies of Loudoun County. Normally, this time of year, Loudoun Wildlife Conservancy runs an in-person dragonfly field trip. This year, we're producing this video to talk about dragonflies and damselflies. We'll introduce you to dragonflies and damselflies, talk about cool dragonfly facts, show you the most common species around us, and point out places and resources you can use to further your exploration of the topic. Odonata is the name of the taxonomic order of insects that contains dragonflies and damselflies. The short name for individual dragonflies or damselflies is Ode, and going out to look for them is called Oding. Odonata have an ancient history. Fossils of similar insects are found as far back as 320 million years ago. To give that some context, 66 million years ago was the age of the dinosaurs. Some of these ancient precursors to the Odonata were giant, with wingspans as large as two feet. Odonatas are amazing hunters and highly carnivorous. Their almost 360 degree eyesight gives them a field of view that allows them to avoid predators and to find prey in almost any situation. They will eat other odes. Well, they really eat basically anything they can catch. Their unique flight capabilities also enable them to be incredible hunters. Did you know that dragonflies migrate? Some of them migrate great distances. The wandering glider makes flights across the Indian Ocean that are longer than monarch butterfly migrations. In our area, we have four species that are known to migrate. The common green darner, the wandering glider, the spot wing glider, and the black saddlebags. There are about 6,000 species of odes worldwide, with about 450 species found in the United States. In Virginia, we have about 150 species, and in Loudoun, we have about 80 species reported. One good thing to clear up is that odes don't sting, and while they can bite, they typically will not, even when held in the hand. I've never been bitten by one, but people that have say it does not really hurt. To make it easier to talk about odes, we'll take a quick look at their anatomy. Odes are insects, so they have six legs, and their body is composed of three main parts, a head, thorax, and abdomen. The head holds the incredible compound eyes, some made up of thousands of facets. The thorax is where the four wings attach. The abdomen is composed of 10 segments, numbered with the 10th segment at the very end of the ode. One thing that we'll see when we look at damselflies is we'll see differences in the position of the eyes. Damselflies have eyes that are separated in general, where dragonflies have eyes that are close together. We'll also see that there is a difference in the way they hold their wings. As with this dragonfly, dragonflies hold their wings out to the side. Damselflies hold their wings together vertically over their bodies, generally. An interesting feature of odes is that they have a stigma which contains a blood-like substance that is one of the features that helps them fly. In the case of the spangled skimmer, it actually can provide a good field mark. This image is of a female blue dasher dragonfly. The blue dasher is one of our most common dragonflies. Many species of odes are sexually dimorphic. The males and females of the same species look distinctly different. This blue dasher male is a picture taken from our yard. You can see from the picture that the body shape is the same as the female, but the male's abdomen is light blue with the last few segments of the abdomen being dark blue. Blue dashers are part of the family of dragonflies called skimmers. Skimmers are generally found near the still waters of ponds. One of the great features of most skimmers is that they like to perch. This tendency to perch makes them much easier to observe and photograph than many of the other families of odes. This eye-catching male common whitetail is also a member of the skimmer family. For the males, we have no other dragonfly in our area that has that white coloration on the whole abdomen. Like the blue dasher, these dragonflies are very common around any kind of still water. The frosted appearance, called prunescence, of both the blue dasher and the male common whitetail dragonflies is used as a territorial threat. The female common whitetail can actually be a little tricky to ID. 
Another female dragonfly looks very similar, and the markings on the side of the abdomen are the best field marks to use to separate them. Here in the common whitetail, you can see the many angled light colored marks, which helps differentiate them. One thing you'll notice when looking for dragonflies in the field is that males tend to congregate very close to the water, and females are found both close to the water and further away. When moving close to the water, the females will be approached aggressively by males looking to reproduce. This widow skimmer male is almost as vibrant in the wing colorations as the common whitetail male was in abdomen coloration. Another skimmer, this dragonfly is found in the same environment as the common whitetail. As you can see, the widow skimmer female is much less vibrant in coloration, but still striking. This change in coloration for the females is probably a useful adaptation to allow them to better blend in their surroundings and avoid predation. This vibrant, beautiful dragonfly is a female eastern pondhawk. This magnificent green color and fantastic pattern on the abdomen is unique to the female and young male pondhawks. Eastern pondhawks often fly very aggressively around their territories and they always strike me as having a pushy personality. I don't find the subdued blue of the abdomen of the male eastern pondhawk to be nearly as pretty as the female pondhawk pattern, but one of the male's most striking attributes is an awesome green face. Juvenile great blue skimmer females don't have any blue on them but they have a characteristic coloration of wings that also occurs on adults. It looks like the end of their wings has been dipped in ink. Compared to the other dragonflies we have looked at, the great blue skimmers live up to their name and are impressively larger in stature. The great blue skimmer male looks almost like a larger version of the blue dasher with a few small changes. The change in color at the tip of the blue dasher's abdomen is missing on the great blue skimmer. It is just a solid blue in color. The wings of the great blue skimmer look like they're dipped in ink, as you can see on the far wing. And also the face is white. These coloration differences and size will help you figure out when you have found a great blue skimmer. From a fairly large dragonfly to our smallest, this pretty dragonfly, called an eastern amber wing, is tiny. It's only about an inch long. The males have these lovely reddish wings with blood red stigmas. As with the other dragonflies shown, this is in the skimmer family. It likes still pond water and the females are more plain looking. In the introduction, we mentioned that some dragonflies migrate. This dragonfly, the common green darner, is one of those that migrates. In our region, they are one of the first dragonflies to take flight and we can see them in March. Likely, some of the individuals are migrating up from more southern states. The male's distinctive green thorax and blue abdomen and large size make them easy to ID at a distance. These dragonflies really like to patrol an area, flying back and forth over and over again. It can be very hard to get a decent photo of them because they rarely perch. This photo was taken after netting the common green darner. We won't really talk about capturing dragonflies with nets here, but if you make it to one of our in-person walks, we'd be happy to discuss the ins and outs of capturing dragonflies and damselflies. This handsome fellow is a male fragile forktail. It is tiny. Most are less than an inch long. This is the first damselfly we have shown and belongs to the family of pond damsels. The coloration and the exclamation point pattern on the thorax make this a fairly easy ID in the field. But you need to look down. They rarely get very high in the air and they're very easy to overlook with their small size. As we talked about with damselflies, notice that it's holding all four wings upright together over its body instead of to the sides. This large ebony jewel wing damselfly belongs to the broad wing damsels family. It likes moving water and is commonly found along the edges of creeks and streams. Ebony jewel wings appearance are distinctive for our area. This one is a male. A female would have a white stigma that makes them very easy to ID in the field. Now that you've seen the most common odes you are likely to see in the field in Loudoun, 
Let's talk a bit about Dragonfly and Damselfly families. First up are the club tails. These dragonflies really fit their name since the end of their abdomens is larger than the earlier segments. This unicorn club tail is actually a bit of an outlier because it is common around ponds. This picture was taken at Banshee Reeks. Most club tails prefer fast moving water of creeks, streams, and rivers. Their predominant colors are yellow and black. There are 14 club tail species we can expect to find in the area. The second family is the cruisers. These dragonflies also live up to their name. They are constantly cruising around and hard to get photos of. Once again, they prefer fast moving waters from streams and rivers. I was very pleased to find this perched swift river cruiser. Notice the perched position is different from both the skimmers we have seen and the club tails. They prefer that vertical perching style. We'll skip the darners, since we've already seen our most common darner, the common green darner. Next up is the emeralds family. They're named for their striking green eyes of the males. Like the cruisers, they rarely perch, and when they do, they perch vertically. The petal tail family only has a single member, the gray petal tail. They're uncommonly found, and their nymphs can be found in mud with very little water. The muted grays and blacks of the gray petal tail contrast with the bright blues, reds, yellows, and greens we find on most other species of dragonflies in our area. We don't have many members of the spike tail family in our area. They are characterized by dark abdomens accentuated by yellow stripes and spots. This brown spike tail was found at the Blue Ridge Center for Environmental Stewardship. The last dragonfly family is one that we have talked about the most, the skimmers. They like ponds and still water, and you've seen many examples of them already, so we'll leave it at that. There are three families of damselflies found in our area. The first, the broadwing damselflies, only has two members in our area. We already talked about the ebony jewel wing. The other member is the American ruby spot. This striking damselfly's appearance really matches its name. The next family is the spreadwing family. The name tells us the most important feature of these damselflies. They hold their wings slightly askew horizontally instead of vertically over their bodies like most damselflies. In our area, there are only a handful of spreadwings found. This slender spreadwing was recently found at the JK Black Oak Wildlife Sanctuary. This unique property in Luckett's area was recently purchased by Loudon Wildlife and was intended to be the location of this summer's dragonfly field trip. The bulk of our region's damselflies are in the pond damsel family. 19 different species in this family can be found in Loudoun. Dancers, bluets, and forktails are all in this group. The picture is of a familiar bluet, well, two familiar bluets, in the process of mating. This position is called the wheel. Odonata have a complicated reproductive process. This male eastern pond hawk is sitting on a stick and protecting his territory at Banshee Reeks. The Odonata life cycle is pretty amazing. This pond hawk will only live as an adult for just a couple weeks. His focus will be on reproduction. As other dragonflies enter his territory, he'll chase off any other rivals or even members of different species. Some of these other dragonflies might try to catch him and eat him. With luck, he'll find a female pond hawk to mate with. Once he finds a female, they'll mate and you'll see them enter the wheel position. This complex position is required for the reproductive process. After mating, the eastern pond hawk female will start to lay eggs in the water nearby. Notice the male eastern pond hawk is protecting her while she lays eggs. Here is another video from JK Black Oak Wildlife Sanctuary, where you can see how this female great blue skimmer is laying eggs in the water. She hovers above and bends her abdomen into the water to lay the eggs. 
Once the eggs hatch, they'll become nymphs. These pictures are of damselfly nymphs that were caught during a stream monitoring event. When monitoring streams for water quality, collecting damselfly or dragonfly nymphs is considered a sign of good water quality. The image on the left was taken with a cell phone and the image on the right was taken through a field microscope, providing a closer view. Odonata actually spend the bulk of their life cycle as nymphs. They can spend as many as several years as nymphs. In the water as a nymph, they are still fierce predators and will eat anything they can catch. They have an incredible method of catching prey. They have a mouth part called the labium that can extend and retract to snag their prey. They can propel themselves rapidly through the water by releasing a powerful jet of water behind them. These two capabilities allow them to approach and grab prey in tenths of a second. Eventually, the nymphs will emerge from the water. They'll climb up on a piece of vegetation and then break through their exoskeleton. They will unfold their wings and dry them out to become an adult dragonfly. This image is of that leftover exoskeleton called an exuvia. This exuvia was found at JK Black Oak Wildlife Sanctuary, and we believe that it was a swamp darner that emerged. On the left is the bottom side, and on the right is the top side. If you look closely at the top, you can see the hole where the dragonfly emerged out of the exoskeleton. There are many resources available to support exploring your interest in odes. On LWC's website, you can find a checklist for the dragonflies and damselflies of Loudoun County. On the inside cover, you'll see the list of dragonflies and damselflies that have been observed in the county. It also shows which months these odes have been observed in the county. Another great resource is a website called The Dragonflies of Northern Virginia. While it only covers dragonflies, it has great pictures and descriptions of all the dragonflies and families you can find locally. In addition, it includes details about places to look for odes. For damselflies, the best field guide for our area is called Damselflies of the Northeast by Ed Lamb. This slim field guide contains accurate drawings, range maps, and even an actual size silhouette. I highly recommend this as the best source for identifying damselflies. For dragonflies, I use multiple guides, but I don't typically carry any of them in the field with me. Most of the dragonfly guides are too large to carry comfortably. I like the dragonflies and damselflies of Georgia and the southeast because it has large pictures of most of our common dragonflies, making it easy to visually pick out the right species. Northern Virginia Dragonflies and Damselflies by Bob Blakeney is a slim guide that is small enough to carry into the field since it is limited in geographic scope. Loudon Wildlife sells copies of this guide through its online store. Dragonflies and Damselflies of the East is also a highly regarded guide that can be handy for figuring out identification challenges. If you are a Facebook user, there are also several Odonata groups that will help you with identification and showcase other enthusiast pictures. Finding and identifying Odonata can be a very enjoyable hobby. You can also contribute your sightings to a citizen science project called Odonata Central. You can use the website to get an idea of Ode seen in other parts of the state and county, and you can also report your local sightings. Lastly, we'll talk about places to go Oding in Loudoun County. Normally, we conduct the Dragonfly field trip at Bliss Park because it provides a great diversity of odes. This diversity comes from the fact that Bliss Park contains a pond and a marsh and borders a creek and a river. The variety of aquatic habitats leads naturally to a wide variety of odes. All the pictures in this presentation were taken in Loudoun County at a variety of locales, including Bliss Park, Banshee Reeks, Blue Ridge Center for Environmental Stewardship, Rust Nature Sanctuary, and Morven Park. Algonquian Park, Claude Moore Park, and Broadlands Wetlands are also great local places to find odes. Hopefully you've enjoyed this discussion and has helped encourage your interest in all things Odonata. If you're interested in finding out more about Loudoun Wildlife Conservancy and our programs, you can visit loudonwildlife.org. For just $35 a year, you can join Loudoun Wildlife and get our fantastic quarterly newsletter, The Habitat Herald. That's a great way to find out more about our conservation efforts and field trips. And of course, we'd be more than happy to accept your donations to further other aspects of our mission. I hope to see you at one of our programs.